Capricorn ascending sign. So both of you pay attention. Now, October 2015 is possibly the best month of the entire year. I am mostly starting that prognostication with the new moon, October 12th, but everyone can in some way maximize their luck and continue upgrades in the month of October. Now, the first half, as I mentioned, is a little tricky. That's the red area. It gets a lot better. After the second half, those are the green area. I'm gonna go into detail here. Mercury retrograde until October 9th is in your 10th house. So you've had a lot of book work or you've had a lot to do to reconfirm your purpose of life. You may have had to adjust uh, reputation. There may have been some misunderstanding, but you can find new ways to triumph over obstacles. So I'm putting those in the affirmative. Mercury retrograde is not everyone's favorite time just because it does take a little extra work and there's misunderstandings. But um, to add to just a little bit of that challenging phase of the beginning of October, we have Mars opposite Neptune. That's October 3rd through 9th. So in this case, Mars is in your ninth house of education and religion. You're gaining more global awareness. You may be traveling, but um, that's Mars. So you're enterprising in that area. But meanwhile, there are some really complicated things connected to meetings. Either there's a lot of sensitivity, everybody has different ideas, you've got to be really aware of everyone, or maybe there's a lot of media responsibilities, a lot of communications, a lot of ahead of time things. So it's a little tricky. So here you're trying to bring in some really vast, exciting ideas with Mars in the ninth house. And yet you have to interpret this and be so, oh, so careful and empathetic with everyone in the group. So that's a little tricky. October 4th through 9th, another slightly tricky thing in the sense that sun in your 10th house and, uh, of, of um, life's purpose, ambitions, and goals is forming a challenge. Now, I call this the sort of Damocles when you have an object that is a celestial object in the 10th house bearing down on a, an object, celestial object, in the first house. In this case, Pluto, you are kind of a mysterious character right now. and You don't maybe want to be famous, <laughs> exactly. You don't want people to know about you. But meanwhile, sun in your 10th house, it happens once a year, is that you have to get out there. So somehow you have to protect yourself enough or protect your trade secrets or just wear sunglasses. I'm only kidding. But, you know, some way to, you know, pr preserve your own feeling of integrity, you know, even though you're out there and with a lot of career action in October. Okay, so figure out a way. So now we go on to, this is a much more upbeat situation where you have, uh, you know, you feel really good about um, your, your education, your religion, this kind of developing philosophy, and you have a greater global awareness. And then this is really contributing greatly to um, your um, positive identity, um, your personality, and, and your appearance, so that everything about you is benefiting from education or maybe from travel, so that you're really blooming in some way. October goes, uh, October 9th, Mercury goes back to prograde, so things are getting easier in terms of your career and your goals, so they look a little bit more positive, so that's really great. Uh, the new moon is on October 12th, but we're gonna see there's a time window of the 10th through the 14th, so the new moon here in your 10th house gives you a really great opportunity to reset some of those goals to, um, to go be your own profit in a way, because the new moon, some of the things open and receptive, expectant, anxious, prophetic, hopeful and wishful. It is a little introverted, so you want to push yourself, either attend some conferences or you know, contact your peers or you know, really get way some incentive to be more um, involved with your career. And some of the topics that are really hot topics in your career, um, because the new moon is near the star spica, is science, agricultural, philosophy. Some of the interesting scenes are cultural scenes, also music and art. You know, maybe you'll meet some new clients in, in a cultural setting, or you become more involved. And the issues are hope versus cynicism. So, as, of course, you want to be hopeful because it's one of the ideas of the new moon but um, maybe skeptical if something seems to weigh out. And so, so the experiences that you gained earlier in the month, um, and, and maybe even went as far as scandals, betrayal, or, or distractions, build your character so now you can push forward and use these in the areas of culture, science, and justice 
in your 10th house of your career. Now, this new moon is really unusual in the sense that it's opposing the planet Uranus. Uranus right now is visiting planets kind of like move in for long-term visits in certain houses of your zodiac, in this case, in your solar house. It's in the fourth, and that is your basis for happiness. So really, you're in some kind of a, a whole new makeover of you know, futurism connected to your, your family, your home. So whether you're wiring your home up with all this electronic stuff or you're, you know, have all kinds of, you know, altruistic, important activist meetings in your home, community meetings or whatever, this is great. But I mean, it's a balance between, okay, you got all this career stuff going on and then you got all this or hosting or you're uh, managing a lot of things for the future in your home. So this is a kind of manic and it's a really kind of vivid new moon, especially for you. So um, things get a little easier October 14th through the 20th when Mars is kind of Jupiter because here you get a chance for more education or you know, a religious experience, maybe some travel, and you feel really part of the global community. So that's pretty exciting. And then also Venus conjuncts Jupiter October 24th through 29th. Again, reiterating some of those same themes of education, religion, travel, and global awareness. The full moon is completely different. Okay, the full moon in your fifth house is you know, it's accentuating your special talents and maybe your children are doing, if you have any children, they're doing something amazing and that you have now you know, really got some great handle on probability estimates of how to really say where are you gonna do well. Full moon is also always a time of drama. In this case, the full moon is in near the constellation Andromeda. So it invites outside the box thinking, really innovative, really different. It's also near the constellation of the triangle. So interest in geometry, which might apply to your talent or architecture and um, also justice oriented. Um, then you can uh, near, because this full moon also near the heart of Ketus the whale, you can feel the pulse and center of life and sensing pattern, which goes back to pattern recognition relates to probability. There's the train agreeing with me. Um, and so we, and also having strong primal instincts and idealism. This is a great thing to teach your children and it's a great thing to, for longevity in terms of your talents is to have the, the primary, you know, that you're really getting primal and basic with talent development, but also that there's something taking you up to a higher level. So just an outstanding time, huge conglomerates, a lot of harmony, a lot of help. November is very different. So this is your sneak preview of November. Is um, it's a t it's a time of stoicism and sacrifice. Everybody has to toughen up, but not be self-destructive. So October is a time just to really go move forward with all of your heart and all of your soul. November is a time to be on guard and stay cool. So there's the contrast there. Going to be very different. But I really wish you well in October, and I hope it works well for you. And my name is Victoria Martin. Thank you so much for watching.